cookies. Let me introduce you to blue notes. What are they? Why are they very important in Scandinavian folk music? And also how to like start playing them, how to tame them, especially if you come from a style of music that doesn't have blue notes. If this sounds interesting, well, please follow me to the forest of blue delights. What are blue notes? Basically, every note that you cannot play on a piano. So, what we call blue notes might also be called microtones or sometimes quarter notes, although this last term is not super accurate. We're gonna come back to that in a few minutes. But the history of what we considered blue notes, uh, as opposed to tempered, notes is very much linked to the history of the piano as an instrument. So during the Baroque time, when the piano-like instruments started to appear, they presented a new challenge for tuning, basically. Because I'm gonna try to make it short and easy to understand, but it's a very complex and wide topic. Waves, the wavelengths of notes have different like width and that's what creates sounds. So intervals, so two different notes and the difference between them, will sound in tune when the two wavelengths of the two notes are a multiple of each other. And physically those wavelengths are not exactly regular. So basically what happens is that if you try to put your different intervals of your music on a regular scale, it's not gonna work because wavelengths behave their own way and they don't want to fit into a regular system like the metric system, for example. So some pure sounding intervals are slightly bigger than we would like them to be. So when you want to tune a whole piano, which covers several octaves into something that sounds in tune all the way, you will have to make compromises and it's actually not gonna be fully in tune. And also you will have to decide of a tuning that is gonna be kind of standard because the difference of a piano as opposed to instruments like a fiddle or other instruments you can tune yourself, a guitar and so on, is that the piano needs to be tuned by a specialist. It's too complicated to tune because of all these notes, all these strings, the material and everything. You cannot tune it yourself. So the musician is not gonna tune their piano, but you will need to have a specialist who comes and does that. And therefore, you need to have a system for the specialists, the piano tuners, <laughs> to be able to tune the piano well, no matter what piano it is. And so there needs to be a standardization. That goes also with the fact that the piano is a manufactured instrument. It's not really something that you can build on your backyard with a bit of wood, which the old fiddles and similar instruments wear. The piano has two complicated mechanics. You need a factory to make the parts and everything so it works. It's too mechanically complex if you want. So all this led to orchestras and other music ensembles to try to find a kind of compromise and something that would work for everyone to play together. This led to most music being settled into one tuning. Nowadays we use 440 hertz, which is a wavelength measure, for the A. This one. But before that, people in ensembles would just tune to each other because people did not have absolute tuning, they had relative tuning. So you were playing with a dude who had made his own flute and you would tune your fiddle to the flute because that's what sounds better and play together. And then you had other people somewhere else who had like a very wet, humid climate so they had to tune their instrument in a different way so they don't get destroyed. You know, every ensemble was doing their own thing. But with an instrument manufactured in big factories and needing a specialist to tune them and everything, you need to like standardize a little bit. And in a way it's a good thing, because then you have all those musicians, if they meet, they can suddenly play together because they are tuned similarly. The downside of that is that suddenly you lose lots of other tunings and you are 
everyone is like going to the tuning of the piano. You are using that scale for everyone. That's what's happening mostly in orchestras because you need lots of musicians to play in a similar tuning so it sounds good. And if there is a piano, you have to be functioning with the piano. So it made the whole tuning system, at least in Europe, I'm talking most about Europe here, but also like a bit the US and so on, so the Western world. The rest of the world is way less uniform actually, but this part of the world got very uniformed, uniformized. And so we lost many different tunings. So I talked about intervals that are not exactly regular earlier. And so if you had instruments that were doing other systems than something that is regular like the piano does well suddenly they could not play with the pianos so they were a bit put to the side that's why some instruments are not part of orchestras traditionally bagpipes for example are not really part of orchestras because they tend to have different scales so they are kind of relegated to folk music and then the question comes why should we put aside so many instruments and other tunings just for the sake of uniformity and one instrument Piano is a great instrument, it has been revolution into the music world, yes, but why should it decide of how we tune? And why should we ignore so many instruments that have very interesting music traditions, very good tunes, that have very good sound and so on? It's a richness that we kind of have set aside to uniformize the, ones, the instruments that could be uniformized. Um, and I personally think that we should not ignore all those tunings. We should not ignore the instruments that cannot be moved in their scales or have different scales. And if you think about Indian music, for example, or Middle Eastern music, you have lots of notes that you cannot play on a piano, all the ones that we call microtones or quartertones, because those uh, repertoires have not been influenced, at, it, at least not for a long, long time, maybe nowadays a bit more, but they have not been influenced by a tempered instrument. So the scale of the piano is the equal tempered scale. So it's this regularly kind of metric scale, if you want. And all the scales that do not fit into that, that use tones that are not equally spaced, can be called blue scales. The term blue notes comes from blues music because that was the first Western popular music that proudly went into non-tempered scales and singers especially, but also guitars, would play blue notes, so notes outside of the range of the piano. And the feelings it gives like is a bit more tension, they sound a bit out of tune, we're gonna come back to that feeling. And so as they were associated with blues and then with jazz, they were called blue notes. And in Sweden, we tend to use also blå toner, so blue notes. But as said, you can meet other names. Microtones is a very valid one. And we're gonna talk about quarter tones later. So then there is a thing we really have to address. Are blue notes out of tune? What we consider as in tune in the Western world is what is equal temperament, so tempered. Uh, as we shorten it, because that's what we hear the most in classical music, in all the orchestra scores, in all the pop music, the rock music, metal, you name it, usually what we hear very predominantly is the equal tempered scale, because it has been uniformized by the piano. And the notes that are in between those tones might sound foreign to us. Are they out of tune? What does out of tune mean? Is it just that it's something you're not used to, like a sound in another language that your language doesn't have? It might sound very weird, like for me as a native French speaker, hearing the sound in English in the beginning was really weird, or in Swedish, but it's just part of the language. It's another way of functioning. It's not less valid. And as said before, many cultures still retain microtones in their traditional music and it's not out of tune it is tones that are as valid as the tempered ones and i personally think that blue notes are a richness that we have lost in our modern western world music there are lots of notes all the ones between the 
that we have just lost all the ones in between those notes. Where are they? If we can play them, we add all that to our music. But there is a very big difference between playing blue notes that you chose, that you want to play, and playing out of tune because you don't know where to put your fingers. Because on fiddle, for example, you have not practiced enough, your fingers are not knowing where the place of the notes are, and then it's out of tune. So I think the difference is blue note is competence, and out of tune is unwillingly happening. So unconscious blue notes are out of tune. They are not blue notes if you want, but the ones that you make on purpose, well, you made them on purpose. They don't demonstrate a lack of skill, but actually skills. Why do we want to talk about blue notes when talking about Scandinavian folk music, which is what we do on this channel mostly? Why do we even bother with blue notes? Are they important? Well, actually, yes, they are. Nowadays, a lot of people are playing Scandinavian folk music with tempered scales and instruments, because that's what we do in the West. But there are many instruments that are not tempered, like many folk flutes from mostly the Western part of Sweden, or, for example, overtone instruments, so the ones using the harmonic scale, which is not a tempered scale, like Seliflöjt, the overtone flute from Norway, or mouth harp, which has been very prominent in some areas, and the Swedish bagpipe, the Sekpipa, which has nowadays been modified so that it can play tempered, but historically had a very blue scale. All those instruments, and also the fiddles who can play as blue as they want, or tempered, have been playing blue for a long time. If you would be playing on your fiddle with a person on Sekpipa, you would play a blue scale. And there are many tunes that are still blue and played blue by all the instruments who can. And as the fiddle is the most prominent instrument in Scandinavia, we can play quite a lot of blue tunes. And I think, again, that it's a richness to be able to play these instruments and those scales. Instead of like uniformizing them, we can discover them for what they really are, including the ones that can be tempered. We can also play versions of them that are not. So I have roughly divided instruments into three categories for this video based on how well they can or cannot play blue notes. The first category is the one of instruments with fixed scales. And here you have already two subcategories. The first one being the ones with a tempered scale, like the piano, the accordion, and similar instruments that you cannot retune yourself and will stay in a tempered scale. These ones just basically cannot play blue notes, only if you retune them on purpose, but usually you need a specialist to do that. Or maybe there are some versions of these instruments that can play blue notes. Recently I met a harmonica player who had like 20 harmonicas of different keys and so on, and including one with quarter tones. It's of course easier with smaller instruments, you can buy a harmonica for much less than a piano, so with the bigger instruments you just will not be able to play blue notes. Which is a very good argument to learn and buy a new instrument, in case you need an any. Second subcategory, the instruments with a fixed scale that is actually blue, like some flutes for example, or all the overtone instruments, or maybe those very specific harmonicas or other usually tempered, but this one is not, instruments. You will not be able to play outside of that scale, but if it's blue, it's already blue. And these are actually very interesting to understand what blue scales may have existed, especially like the old models that we may have, like old folk flutes from Sweden. And I will talk a bit more about that at the end of the video. Our second category are the instruments that you can yourself easily retune before you play and then they will play the notes that you have decided, like a harp or, for example, a nickel harpa. On a nickel harpa or a hurdy-gurdy, you can easily retune the tangents to change your intonation. And also, you will, while you play, have a possibility of bending a little bit, which is very much done on guitar, but also on hurdy-gurdy uh, and other instruments, 
but that actually makes these instruments slightly into my third category which is the one of instruments in which every time you will play a note you will have to decide its intonation that's what makes violin and all the violin family so difficult to play you have to have very precise placement of your fingers so that they are exactly where you want them but it allows you more freedom if you want to play a blue note every time you want you can play that note blue in this category we have well all the fiddle family viola cello and so on but we have also many flutes i know that you can like turn slightly a flute to change intonation or some different fingerings fingerings sometimes or changing the air pressure I don't know exactly how clarinets and so on work, but I know that they can, to some extent, like go slightly higher. And also an instrument that we tend to forget, the voice. That's why singing is so difficult, because every time you sing a note, you have to intonate it the way you want. But this, again, allows you the freedom of singing as many blue notes as you want. For the next chapter of this video, which are exercises for playing blue notes, I will mostly focus on the third category and fiddle, because that's my instrument. But you can, of course, take a lot of what I'm going to say to the instruments of the second category, so you can just retune your scale and then play the blue notes. But practicing blue notes really is more going to be a thing of fiddles and company. A few exercises to start taming blue notes, especially if you come from classical music, as was my case. I was very perturbated, confused, lost about blue notes. Let's not get lost in the woods. So. We're going to take one of the easiest and most common scales in Swedish folk music, the D Dorian, which goes like this, if I take the tempered D Dorian. So we have this position of the fingers both times. Half tone between the two first fingers, full tone between the second and the third. And the first note we're going to put a little bit blue will be the sixth note of the scale, which is the one that is the most often blue in blue scales in Sweden. This is going to be our C. So instead of a full C, I'm going to play once a full C, then a full C sharp, and then a C in the middle, without moving my first and third fingers. So... C, now with C sharp, now a C in between, what is very hard is to not move your third finger when you do that, so what you can do is go up with a C and down with a blue, and then up with a C sharp and down with a blue, from the A. Move the C, now with the C sharp, move the C, so just practice this blue C, first on its own, and then take a very simple tune or maybe just even a little bit more elaborate scale, like... For example. Then we can take our second blue note, we remove entirely the sixth that is blue, we put it back into its C shape, and we take the third note of the scale and do the same thing. And it's going to be the same fingering. So same exercise. We go up with an F and we go down with an F blue from the D. Now with an F sharp. And 
use it several times, try to get rid of your finger neither at the F nor at the F sharp, but in between, and to keep your E and G very stable, where they should be in tune, very tempered. And then again, take a little scale or take a very simple tune that you know very well, and instead of playing it with an F, for example, Herr Olof, sound very out of tune and especially if you come from classical it's gonna be really confusing and you will want to correct it. The point is to de-learn that this is wrong. Again we are not out of tune we are doing this consciously willingly it's a blue note and you will notice that some tunes will sound better with blue notes than others maybe because you've heard them more tempered uh, some of them or because you've heard them once played on a folk flute that was very blue, you never know, or just the melody, how it's built. And then our third note that you can take a bit blue is the sixth. So here it will be our B. And again, we're gonna remove all the other blue notes. Take one blue note at a time, else your hand is gonna be really confused. And we can do the same with the little exercises, but if I take head all off at once, you know how the exercises go now. Let's take a tune. <laughs> between B flat and B. Similar exercises and so on. You can also play, practice that B on the G string with the same exercise as before. So really take that D Dorian scale and practice one at a time those blue notes. The C, the F and the B. Then you can start practicing in another scale, still one blue note at a time, we can take G Dorian Ooh, I like this one. And so on. And then, next step, you can play several blue notes in the same scale. For example, here we could take the third and the sixth. So, B and E. Ah, and here I did what I told you not to do, I moved my hand, I moved my reference finger, the first one. Aye, aye, aye. So, keep playing with those three main blue notes, play one of them, play two of them, and also try to vary. You can, for example, play an F in a part of the melody and then in another part of the melody you play an F blue. If I take Herr Olof in D again... You can vary! And then you can also take different scales. You don't necessarily have to play in Dorian, you can play in whichever major scale as well. For example. And then, if we want to go even further, and even more accurate to Scandinavian tradition, we can explore a few more blue notes than what we have just done. So, when we have half tones, those leaves are half tones, the tempered ones, what we've done so far was to put a quarter tone right in the middle of our half tones. This one is blue, it's a blue note. And that's actually a blue note that is used quite a lot in many repertoires across around the world, uh, across different genres, especially in traditional music. But we still have space in between the leaves and the blueberry. So there are notes there that we could also play. So instead of just playing the quarter tone, we could play one of the eighth notes. For example, if this is an F, this is an F sharp, this is our F blue, quarter tone, 
but the one that I usually call the F blue, we could play an F that is slightly higher than the tempered F, but not as high as right in the middle in between the two half tones. Or we could also play the lo slightly lower F sharp. Of course, there are still micro spaces in between those notes, but there we are already enri enriching our repertoire of notes quite a bit. Let me show you that on fiddle. If I take from D and my note that I want to play blue is my F again. Regular F. Regular F sharp. Now quarter tone. Right in the middle. But then in between the F and the F blue, I can slide my finger slightly down and play an F that will be just a little bit higher. Yeah, it's a bit higher. It's not, it's not the full quarter tone. Just a little bit. It's very subtle. And at first, maybe you will not hear it that well, but it's gonna come. Similarly, instead of taking an F sharp, you can take slightly lower F sharp. It is not the quarter tone, but slightly higher than that. And it's not the F sharp either. So there you have even two more blue notes per half tone interval that you can add. And actually those two A tones, if we want to call them that, are the most common ones in Scandinavian repertoires. It's quite rare that we will have the full quarter tone, but most of the time we will have a slightly higher intonation on those most common blue notes, like the F, the C, maybe the B. So we're not gonna go full <laughs> Most often we're gonna have the slightly higher F. And slightly lower B. And to me it's gotten to the extent that I'm so used to this slightly higher F because it's present in many different scales that we use a lot in Sweden that I have difficulties playing a full tempered F. I find it flat and a little bit boring. I prefer when it's a bit higher up on the E string especially. Somewhere there, not, that's too low. I like it a little bit bluer. And I've actually tuned my nickel harpa, most of the time it's tuned with a slightly bluer F, slightly higher F. So that's really your taste, what you find interesting, which other instruments you play with. If you jam a lot with a sec pipa that has a slightly blue note somewhere, maybe it's a good idea to tune to that instrument a bit more permanently if you have an instrument that can do that instruments of the second category like nickel harpa uh, hurdy-gurdy harp and so on or if you play an instrument that can play all the blue notes it's easy to like tune in to the others you're playing with i hope i convince you of the importance and beauty of blue notes I am personally really fond of them and I like exploring them. I feel it really broadens my feeling about music in general and suddenly my world is just so much richer. It's not just those notes but everything in between, which is so vast somehow. Also it makes bridges with other repertoires that also have lots of microtones. I would add a little word of caution for beginners. If you are a beginner on an instrument like the fiddle that requires you to be really precise with your intonation, maybe don't start blue notes yet keep this video for a bit later because again your blue notes are intentional they should be if you just get sloppy and you just put your finger somewhere in between you're never gonna learn a very good intonation so get solid with your fingers before you go into the blue notes and then have fun with them i also encourage you to try to listen to instruments that have a blue scale, especially if you are from a totally different background, classical or rock or something. If you like this topic of blue notes and old scales and so on, I'm going to give a little talk at the seminar very soon. 
end of August, maybe beginning of September. Uh, it's going to be online. We don't know the date yet, but we're working on it with a few other people. There will be how to interpret like old Irish Gaelic uh, harp playing and how to tune it and this kind of stuff. And also Baroque cello playing. And I'm going to talk about folk flutes and how they can help us rediscover those old scales uh, from Scandinavia. So stay tuned, pun intended, on my social media so you can see the thing when it happens. I said we don't have the date yet. Have fun playing lots of blue notes and in case you meet some people who are like yeah you're just playing out of tune you're saying blue notes but it's just an excuse because you can't play in tune just tell them that blue is beautiful. Equal temperament. Equal temperament. Bah, I can't talk. <laughs> you're good. Getting, oh, I'm sitting on my 